train took a different route. So we're now in France instead of Belgium. Just a second. There are a few things you should know about us. First of all, we're Ali and Richie, and we decided to leave the US and slow travel through Europe with our dog, Penny. We're on a journey to decide if we will travel indefinitely, find a new place to call home, or head back to the US. For the first time. Long story short, we love Belgian pastries and Panos is amazing, but on to our trip to Yper. I also really love riding the train, so let's go ride a train. Also, Richie forgot to mention that it's our anniversary weekend, so and you'll notice that Penny is not with us. We left her with a pet sitter in Antwerp. We're sad Penny's not here with us, but we're gonna have a weekend with just the two of us, so we're excited to bring you along. took a little bit of a detour. Apparently, in one of the stops, they said that there was some sort of change and the train took a different route. So we're now in France instead of Belgium, and we're trying to figure out how to get back on track. So. But I mean, France is gorgeous. Look at France for about 10 minutes before we take the next the good train. News is French people look very human, so yeah. we're at home. <laughs> oh my goodness. We have arrived in Eber, our lovely host of our B&B &B that we're staying in picked us up from the train station, and she is potentially the cutest human to ever exist. She's so sweet, and she runs this little hotel, boutique hotel, by herself, it appears. Um, this is really special for us to be here because my parents and my grandparents have also stayed here, and they just loved it so much. So this is a little bit of a, a treat for us, um, for our anniversary, and just kind of a nice, Things. We're really happy to be here. The host greeted us with welcome drinks. Richie got a local Belgian beer. I got some sparkling wine and she has been showing us around everything. And we just got to our room and she showed us every little detail of this adorable room. It's a little quirky, the chair is but fuzzy. <laughs> it's so unique. Quirky, 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 extra quirky, but so cool. This is, this is our view. Like, look at that. Oh, wow, you can really see it. I got bit by mosquitoes. On the back of my neck. I don't like mosquitoes, but they love me. Well, we just finished marveling at the wonderment that is our, uh, our hotel. And we are out on the town. We're looking for a place to potentially eat, maybe get some snacks. Yeah, we're in that awkward time where the dinner reservation is in two and a half hours, but we're hungry. So we need a little snack or something. This is so stinking cute. Almost an ice cream emergency. Oh my gosh. Ah! <laughs> so picturesque. Yeah, it's just 
was so nice seeing like everyone out just like enjoying life. Literally the best omelet of my life, and I'm not exaggerating. The town of Ypres and the surrounding Ypres salient is best known for three major World War I battles. In fact, in 1915, this is where the Germans first used poison gas as a weapon. While it's definitely possible to see many of the World War I sites while on your own visiting Ypres, we opted to take a small half-day tour group to avoid having to rent a car and to get more history from an expert guide, and we're really glad that we did. It was definitely a heavy and solemn tour, but even for people who aren't really into World War I history, the insight into the soldiers' everyday lives, wretched living conditions, and gruesome battles was really moving. It's one thing to read about the number of soldiers who died in World War I in a textbook, it's another altogether to stand amongst thousands of graves fanning out in all directions. The mass burial behind me houses 25,000 remains of German troops, and this entire area is a mass burial housing from some 45,000. It's incredible. On the tour, we also visited the Canadian Fallen Soldier and the Tynecott Commonwealth Cemetery, the largest Commonwealth War Cemetery in the world, where we were guided through some of the history, but we also had a space to reflect on the events of World War I in our own time. our final stop on this tour, we are at a little museum that opened, I think she said like in the 30s or something? No, 1922. 1922. I'm walking in an original World War I trench that has the sides sort of supported by metal now so it doesn't collapse. So the tour guide was talking about how zigzaggy it is and how like it's not like a straight line and that was number one to like whenever soldiers would come across they didn't have a straight shot down and so they would have to fight around corners and then also whenever shells came in it didn't just go straight across it the the, the dirt held some of the impact so it saved lives and it's mind-blowing to think that you have to do that lots of rusty metal. <laughs> oh god. I, I also didn't realize that it was just long. <laughs> Richie thought we were gonna miss a brewery tour, but we're actually just gonna miss a lunch reservation because this tour is going long. But that's no big deal because we can find somewhere else to eat. Sorry, didn't mean to control. <laughs> You're fine. All right, we've finished our battlefield tour. It was uh, almost five hours. It yeah. was quite long. It was, we went over a bit. And it was, um, it was so heavy. It was heavy, yeah. It's a lot to digest. It's not a light thing. But um, we walked back into the center of the river and we grabbed some burgers, which look absolutely delicious. She's trying to mix. <laughs> I don't know why. Good. Salt and pepper and mayonnaise. Oh, no, it's fry sauce. Mm. Oh, fry sauce. Oh, shoot. Did I mess it up? That's fine. It doesn't yeah. matter. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So here we are in our lobby. 
drinking tea, teaching Ali chess, and it's raining outside. How perfect is that? We are off to our brewery tour. We had a nice little break back at the hotel. We're just trying to fit in a lot today. Uh, it smells so good after it rained. Did you know that humans, their ability to smell the rain is greater than sharks' ability to smell blood? <laughs> random, random factoid. I had no idea about Oh God, I almost just died. Allie's almost just died. It has sneakers on, and this isn't even a cobblestone road, and I almost broke my ankle, so there you go. Are we are about to bring you into this beautiful brewery. This is it. It's within the castle walls. That's so cool. So we just finished our beer tour and it was amazing. It was it was really interesting to hear the guy talk because uh, how did you put it? You said that it was uh, it was like hearing an artist talk yeah. about their work. Yeah. They, they they know every detail backwards, mm -hmm. forwards, incredibly intricately. And like they they, they talk about it like it's not like it's nothing, but like the intricate details mm -hmm. are trivial to them because they've gone over it so much. And like we've been on other brewery tours, so I'm really glad we did it. Absolutely. And their beer is amazing. <laughs> did we just happen to come upon a park? I think this is like the rampart on the first town. This is on top of the ramparts. Yes. This is so cool. We're totally going down here. This is so cool. That's right. <laughs> Where am I going? Oh. One thing that you should know about me, I love doors and tunnels. It's a tunnel. <laughs> to end our time in Dnieper, we attended what's called the Last Post. It's the British version of what we in the US would call TAPS, a bugle call played to honor the country's fallen soldiers. Originally, this last post was sounded to mark the end of the day's labors and the onset of the night's rest, but over time it began to be used as a way to ceremonially honor soldiers' transition from life to death. Today in Ypres, the last post is sounded every night, 365 days a year, and it has been since 1928. Tourists and locals gather around the Menin Gate at the edge of the old town to witness this haunting ceremony. Honestly, it is one of the more moving things I have seen in my life. The gate was under construction while we were there, but here are some photos without the scaffolding. Um, so we are packing up to go back to Antwerp today. Um, we are just here for two nights, but it was, I think, the perfect little getaway. Maybe next time we'll stay a little longer, <laughs> just because this hotel is so nice. Um, I think we're going to take a little walk in the rain. There's some umbrellas downstairs that we can borrow. So I think we're going to do that as long as it's not raining too hard. <laughs> and then we will catch the next train back to Antwerp. It's 
like ASMR. Raindrops, birds. Mm, yeah. Super cozy. What is this? That's epic. What is this? We're having such a great time walking around in the rain. It's so cute. Look at this. Look at that. And then... Boom. How cinematic is that? There's a lake and a weeping willow. It's, it's, it's very perfect. It's very amazing. Happy anniversary. Hmm. So we're sitting at the train station basically by ourselves and it is I don't know it just feels so perfect and cinematic because it's like a light drizzle you can hear the, the rain pitter patter we're waiting for a train which is inherently cinematic and it's great I was just looking at our our photos on our phone and today's our anniversary, so three years ago, we were getting married. Two years ago, we were doing a hot air balloon ride because we had just moved to Albuquerque. And one year ago, we were listening to live jazz music in Vancouver. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> and now we're on another trip doing amazing things and just makes me feel really grateful that like every year we are just doing like cool stuff. <laughs> Who in the world knows where we'll be next year? Who knows? Where in the world is Richie and Allie? Allie, Allie. <laughs> or I guess it's Allie and Richie. Allie and Richie, <laughs> Richie, Richie. I think it's me first. Maybe where I'll be, where's Waldo? Oh wait, we already did that. Insert picture here. <laughs>